not the end of the world. Okay, um, glass of water. All right, I go dark now. I'm going dark. <laughs> um, See all right, let's uh, let's do it again. So let me just share my screen here. Perfect. And let's go back to the beginning. Oops, like this. Like this. Here we go. And this. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining me on this uh, wonderful exploration of a mystical question Does Snipcart have a head? Um, I just gave that talk, so I'm giving it again, giving it again. <laughs> And I hope uh, you find some insights and some inspiration uh, by doing so. So for those of you who don't know who the hell is talking right now, I am Francois Lantinado. You can call me Frank. Uh, I'm the CEO at Snipcard. That's me drinking some coffee in Paris before the world went to beep. And these are not my sunglasses. I borrowed them. So uh, yeah, fancy living right there. I'm happy to be attending Headless Commerce Summit. That virtual uh, experience is cool. I think it's the best thing we have uh, instead of connecting in real life. And I'm here to talk about Snipcart, of course, which is a e-commerce solution for developers. I'll explain in more detail what it is. And I'm also here to talk a bit about Headless and Jamstack Commerce, which are, uh, let's be frank, some confusingly uh, buzzwordingly uh, umbrella terms, right? But that's all right, because uh, we're going to unpack some of these concepts. And my goal is just for you to have a way to make better decisions for your next e-commerce projects. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go full screen here. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, if, if, if your next e-commerce pro project ends up being with Snipcart, that's great. If not, no biggie. We're an independent, bootstrapped, and profitable business. So we don't have VCs reading down our neck or anything of the sort. Um, so our growth is steady, and we have that luxury of being independent. So what about e-commerce today? Uh, I think there are a lot of solutions and a lot of use cases, and it can get confusing real quick. So we'll try to um, dig a bit more into what type of e-commerce solutions exist and what they can do for you, right? So what they can do for you, that is an ugly image I made myself because our designer was on vacation. But that being said, it kind of gives you a portrait of what e modern e-commerce solutions can offer you. So content management would be managing your marketing site, creating some pages, some templates, some blogs, editing, that kind of stuff. Product management would be creating the products, product variants, managing inventory and SKUs. Store management would be everything that's more logistics about running your store. So orders, customers, taxes, shipping, all that jazz. Card and checkout experience is kind of the, the add to cart functionality on the site. And then the actual shopping cart UI and the whole checkout experience, like billing info, shipping info, paying the CC, all the payment processing, all that. And website design kind of speaks for itself. Um, another ugly picture, but it's functionality works. Um, so I try to put some names just to for, on some random categories so people can get a better feeling of what the different e-commerce solutions offer. Right. So we have the monolith that does everything, the add on that does a couple of things on an existing site added to an existing site. You have the storefront, which is a newer category that works with uh, mostly with progressive web apps. And they, they, they just generate a front end that is holistic for your store, but it, it's not connected to any e-commerce data. You use something else for that, something like CommerceJS or Commerce Layer and Nacelle, which are more on the API front. That being said, they offer some heads, uh, they offer some starters and some templates and some all, all cool, all some, all cool stuff. So 
to make sure you can like find yourself and find what you need, we built a view and tailwind app. Well, we is my friend Max more than I uh, at this address, headlesscommerce.netlify.app. Um, so it looks like this. It's pretty simple, really. But it gives you an overview of the functionalities that are used by different uh, personas of e-commerce solutions. So Monolith does everything. Uh, the API just does these things. Well, among other things, like I was saying, the storefront will focus on that aspect and the add-on will be a product store and cart checkout. Snipcart is mostly in that uh, sense. And you can filter things, right? So even if you close Monolith, you'll see that uh, if you just select API, Shopify, BigCommerce, and Magento, the big players that are uh, older but still relevant, they're there, right? Because they now offer some headless ways to manage your backend, e-commerce backend. So I invite you to check out that app. We'll probably open source it. So if you have some missions and corrections you want us to add, it will be our pleasure. All right, back to the slides. Perfect. So um, this is a sponsor, Lightning Talk. So I kind of have to talk about my product a bit. Um, what about Snipcart? What is it? Uh, does it have a head? Is it just an API? Is it a front end store? Does it manage products? Um, well, it's, it, it does a few different things and I'm gonna explain it to you. Um, we like to define it as a low footprint end-to-end e-commerce solution for developers. So in an e-commerce setup, it will provide a part of your head. That's the cart, the buy buttons, the cart and checkout part, uh, like, we, like we explored. And the rest of your front end and the rest of your content management and back end is totally up to you. We're agnostic about the tech choices you make as a developer. That's one of our values. So um, that's kind of a, a nice imagery that I like to use when I pitch Snipcart to some people or just try to explain it. Snipcart is a e-commerce layer, right? So it's an easy extendable layer that you can add to any existing site. Um, it comes with a customizable cart and checkout. It's HTML and JavaScript based. So products, they are basically elements in your HTML that you define with some product attributes. Um, so everything lives in your HTML uh, and our cart is injected via JavaScript. If you were to want to extend some of these functionalities, we also offer APIs and webhooks for that. And what I just said, this is kind of phase one of using Snipcart, right? Um, so it's very DX, developer experience. A developer picks Snipcart, integrates it with their stack. Phase two is more the merchant experience. And the bridge for that handoff is our merchant dashboard, basically. So once the installation is done, we offer a hosted merchant dashboard where you can manage your store, basically, with all of the core functionalities you need to run an online store. So orders, shipping, taxes, discounts, abandoned carts, inventory management, multi-currencies, users, all that jazz, uh, we have it in the, in, the, in the dashboard. Email templates also. So um, given that, like I said, we have the luxury of being independent and profitable, I can kind of share an anti-pitch for Snipcart, which you in the spirit of honesty to help you make better decisions. So when not to use Snipcart, right? Um, when you need many, many, many different front-end touch points to sell on. So if you want to sell on a native mobile app and on some IoT and some voice and chat agents and through your smart toilets, UI, that kind of stuff, well, maybe Snipcar is the, the best fit right now. I think a digital omni-channel experience is a beautiful concept. The actual need for it to sell on all of these touch points, it depends. Uh, I think it's a bit minor than what, what we'd like to admit. I think some bigger businesses and more enterprise businesses might have some uses usage for that. Um, Maybe one day, it's the kind of use case we'll support with Snipcar. We have a lot of great ideas about the future of the product. Uh, but for now, I'll leave it at that. That leads me to our, my next when not to use Snipcar point, which is when you're a big, big enterprise-grade business. 
the truth is we're a small bootstrap team and uh, contracts and legal red tape and all that, we're not fans, uh, we're not good at it. So maybe that's a cue for you. Um, and we don't have a marketplace with hundreds of one-click integrations that can be done by, for instance, marketing people. Um, so yeah, with that honest part out of the way, something more uh, pleasant for us when to use Snipkart, right? Because there are a bunch of uh, moments when I think it's a, it's a smart choice. So from the seven years we've been running Snipkart, we kind of came up with the spectrum of usage. So people who use Snipkart, they fit on that spectrum. At the end here is customiz customization, flexibility, and control. And at the other end is um, quickness, like going live fast, integrating and selling fast. And we see a lot of stores successfully uh, selling online on that spectrum. So I'll give you some examples of when you use Snipcard. Uh, when you want something authentic, like with no templates that you can customize as you want, uh, with the, the, the tech stack you want, when you're a developer and you're work, working on some SMB project, for instance, whether you're an uh, in-house developer in a company or in an agency, web development agency, or a freelance developer, um, we have some people, some stores selling from 500 USD a month to 500,000 a month. That gives you kind of a range. And um, yeah, so when you want to carefully choose your stack to build your e-commerce site, but you want to offload the headaches of e-commerce to some experts, well, then Snipcart might be a good fit. Um, other, other, other ways to use Snipcart is when you want to ensure upgradability and portability of your e-commerce. So if in a few years you want to change stacks, it's very easy to port Snipcart products in the cart. Um, they live in the front end, right? They're not tied to anything too deep in your installation. And your whole setup. Um, when you want to sell online on an existing site without refactoring it, that's also a great use case. We've seen that. And um, when you want to go online fast and uh, you're, you want your speed to market to be very quick so you can test the waters of an e-commerce uh, of a specific niche or market, that, that's some kind of usage that we've seen with Snipcart. So again, spectrum from customization, and control to fast, right? Fast integration. Okay, so I had a whole slide about things to ask yourself before you pick an e-commerce solution, but it, I don't have the time. And we have a whole blog post uh, on, uh, on, on snipcar.com slash blog that we'll share in the chat and with people who register interest. Uh, so the thing is just to remember that it's not just about trends and buzzwords. It's also about who you're going to be working with, who you're going to be leaving that project to, how secure and scalable and trusted and maintained is that technology, how documented it is it, how accessible is it, all that kind of stuff, right, to consider before you pick an e-commerce solution. Okay, so this is a sponsor talk, and I have to brag just a little bit and show off just a bit. Um, so I prepared some quick examples to give you an idea of when you could use Snipcart. You could use Snipcart when you want to sell coffee, custom coffee on a Gatsby site, for instance. Uh, when you want to sell training, online training resources for childcare uh, on a Statamic site. When you want to sell subscriptions of food boxes delivered straight to your door on a Webflow site. When you want to sell some food essentials in bulk uh, online uh, during the pandemic, that's a local example that I love, a store nearby uh, on a Kirby and View site. Selling some craft beer on a craft CMS site in Chicago. Selling some digital assets for game developers on a static Jekyll site. Selling some merch for individual brands and influencers and whatnot on the Yugo site. And last but not least, uh, selling some awesome, literally awesome satellite imagery uh, of the Earth um, and, and other stuff. It's called over-view.com. I'll share it in the Slack. But they have some wonderful stuff, and they're fostering long-term thinking and human collaboration and whatnot. That's on the Dato, and Gats Dato CMS and Gatsby site. And these are just a few examples, but the truth is we have more than 2,000 customers live all over the world using all, all sorts of stack. So we'd love for you to be some of them if it's, if it's a fit. 
And that's kind of it for me. Thanks a bunch. Uh, I invite you to go bananas and uh, hang out with us in the booth. Ask some questions in the chat. Request to up on video. We can talk live. That'd be great. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Snipcart. Try to share our product development progress and some some content. You know, we're investing in the community. Um, sometimes we write pieces about Snipcart and, and a given tech, but sometimes we just write pieces that are not at all about Snipcart to give back to the community and contribute to our collective education, I guess, in our own experiments. Um, so that's it, basically, for me. I'm going to close this um, close this presentation and invite you to ask questions and connect with us. Uh, it's, it's an honor, a uh, pleasure to be presenting here. So I'll just uh, stop sharing that.